Tired of dealing with vein disease? Have your symptoms gotten worse? Oh, these spider veins are ugly. My legs and ankles are always swollen. My legs are tired of standing all day. While some symptoms can be managed by lifestyle changes, other factors are out of your control. Get help from the experts at Vein Clinics of Hawaii. To learn more about your treatment options, call 427-5565 or visit veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Juliff of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Well, hello there. You know... Uh, we're so glad that you've chosen to join us today because one of the things that we really like doing is just sort of floating around and, and, and hitting on the on the insalient points of vein clinics of why what they do. And as you know, it is a, a great cast, and those of you that are already patients know that. And there are so many different things that go on there, and one of which really circulates around a able-bodied technician who knows what he or she is doing uh, in the diagnosing and in the testing that needs to get done. And before we introduce our special guest of the day, uh, Dr. Julef, uh, being on four islands, it's really important that you have staff that you can trust and staff that have that, that level of expertise. So let's get right into it today because we need to get our friend Mike on the air and then out of here because he's got to go back to work, right. you know? <laughs> unlike us. Um, so let's talk about something that you and I talk about on a regular basis with the real expert. How long has ultrasound been used as a diagnostic tool in vein disease? Oh, it's been a while, probably you know, 25, 30 years. Uh, but the, uh, the technology behind uh, ultrasound yeah. it just keeps improving you know with each uh, advancing year and you're talking uh, about in the in the technology yeah, equipment. yeah, 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 yeah. you know the uh, software yeah. and whatever but uh, yeah our, our ability to visualize blood vessels yeah. with ultrasound uh, yeah it's, it's tremendous it's a tremendous tool and uh, you know with respect to what you were saying before uh, yeah, you know, having an ultrasound tech, as well as everybody sure. in the yeah, office yeah, that you of can course. rely on. But, you know, ultrasound in particular, uh, you know, it all starts with that. You know, the mm-hmm. we use we use ultrasound so extensively uh, in the office. That, Is it hard uh, to even think what it would be like if somebody said, hey, Doc, by the way, your ultrasound thing's broken today. You can't have it. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, you know? <laughs> no, no, we, that, that would uh, put well, us get, away. Get the uh, get the backup unit and do it quickly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, um, you know, we we rely heavily on uh, the expertise of our ultrasound techs. Are there um, travel portable uh, put in a suitcase and go units? There are. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Uh, well, that that's the other thing that uh, that's the other uh, kind of mechanical development that's mm-hmm. happened. Uh, over the past, uh, well, I would say 10, 15 years maybe, uh, they've, they've become so compact. You know, I can remember being, you know, in the hospital years ago, these huge ultrasound machines that, uh, you know, the techs would be pushing around, uh, you know, just tremendously heavy and, and uh, very big. But, yeah, you could uh, basically put it in a suitcase. But one thing that would needs to be asked, and we, we do this from time to time, and that is the, the investment that has got to be made in doing what you and others do. Uh, to open these clinics when you have all of this equipment all over the place. It must mean that, you know, you, you need to stay up with things, but you don't want them to be replaced. Like, remember when computers or the iPhone yeah. changed every eight minutes? I sure. Mean, if you didn't have the new one, I don't want to work for you. Yeah. I want the new stuff. Yeah. Luckily, ultrasound machines are not quite that bad. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you, you know, you have to have reliable uh, machines. And, uh, you know, we have several ultrasound machines uh, in pretty much every office that mm-hmm. we have. So uh, Okay, yeah. well... We we have actually had Mike in here before. Tell me a little bit about Mike so we can start picking his brain about the patient experience. And, and also, for those of you that are out there, if it's been a while since you've uh, looked into, uh, you know, your veins and, and, and your, your vascular system and you hear some of the symptoms that we talk about, uh, you got to giddy up and, and go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com and make an appointment to come in and find out uh, what the new vein clinics look like, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, so... Once again, how we how we came across Mike and what what function he he performs. Well, Mike um, just fortuitously, uh, he was looking for a job the same time we were looking for an ultrasound tech, 
and uh, planets lined up. Yes, yeah, okay. yeah. and uh, you know, I feel like we were very lucky that that happened. Uh, Mike was in California, mm-hmm. uh, which is where he grew up, and he was uh, he had an uh, ultrasound uh, tech kind of company yeah. that he owned and ran, uh, but uh, I think got tired of. Uh, you know, having fun on the highway in Los Angeles. So now you can come here and have the same kind of fun, but no <laughs> yeah. highways. Right? Yeah. Unless you happen to be around sometime on a Monday morning after a long weekend when it's not too much fun. Right. But that being said, and so it's 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 pretty neat. And, and Mike, welcome to the program. And, and it's nice to have you back. I remember when we met the first time you were here, that year surf kind of do it anyway. So Hawaii is just, just, just the right for you. So you've been here how long? Uh, I've been here almost one year now. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And so, Doc, based on previous discussions that we've had, the thing that, that, that prevents anybody from opening a new restaurant or another clinic, like in your case, four on four islands, you, you need to have the kind of staffing that you need. And here comes uh, come Mike at, at the right moment. Right. Um, what, but I'd be interested to in, you know, how did you even get interested in the technology in the first place? Well, you know, I kind of just fell into the field uh, back in about 2010. I knew somebody who had a sister who was in the field, and uh, I spoke with her, and it kind of sparked my interest. Mm -hmm. Um, And in school, you kind of, you know, you learn um, every every area of ultrasound, and you kind of get drawn to one area. I got drawn into the uh, vascular arena Mm -hmm. and started specializing in vascular ultrasound, and then later cardiac ultrasound mm-hmm. echocardiograms um and that's kind of how i got going uh, i think it's kind of interesting doc that that mike's that way because we don't know what motivates you. it's like when we talked about your changing from being a you know uh a heart guy uh, into a, a vein guy mm-hmm. that it's your calling yeah. So here here comes something it would seem to me that anybody can buy the ultrasound equipment you know if you can go to the ultrasound company buy one but I guess there are ways to use it and ways to use it. And when you find somebody that you trust, you would expect to get a standard or a set rule of, of you know, accomplishments every time somebody goes to work. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ultrasound. Uh, you know, you st- when you're when you begin to study ultrasound. You know, ultrasound is used in so many different, you know, arenas. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we look at abdominal contents yeah. with the ultrasound, and we look at other soft tissue things. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Mike mentioned that at some point he moved from that and, be, and became attracted to vascular mm-hmm. ultrasound. Um, so, uh, but, you know, doing, uh, doing venous uh, yeah. work with the ultrasound is even a step above that. Uh, not everybody likes it, mm-hmm. uh, but but yeah, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, it's something that you you, you are drawn to if that's going to be your, your bag. But. Well, you know, thank goodness for all the ingredients, right? Because you sure. need them all. And the thing, Mike, that I you know, that now that I've actually had uh, you do that with me, I think that the same thing holds must hold true. I am fascinated by the way you can touch somebody with a probe. And you can look at the screen, and when you release it, and you can see the squirt this or the squirt that. And I know it's not just a video screen that's been made to entertain people, but that's kind of like, isn't that, is there a set path that you go through on every examination you do? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you have a general idea of what you want to find in a mm-hmm. patient or what you're looking for. Everybody's anatomy is basically the same, but the superficial venous system does have a lot of variations. So you go in there with an idea in mind, a protocol, um, but then you definitely have to stray away from it uh, pretty frequently. Let, let me ask you this, because I, 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 I used to be what was called morbidly obese. I was really a big guy. And I'm still kind of a big guy, but not like I was before. Is it harder to do ultrasound on some people that are physically larger than others. Sometimes, yeah. 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 Sometimes, definitely. Yeah. The, the reason why, and I, I've shared this with Doc before, is I had hip surgery a long time ago, and the physician now who's actually a friend said, man, I, I wish I'd have done you now instead of then. You were <laughs> a pain in the you-know-what. So, so I'm imagining, even though you said everybody's kind of similar, if you've got a foot more skin in between me and the vein, it might be tougher to see. Yeah. How far into my leg can you see? Uh, I can see in probably like if I if I really want to get good mm. like a good idea of what what's going on in the vein I I don't want to look deeper than like eight or nine ten centimeters mm-hmm. uh, with, is, with with the vascular yeah, probe yeah, that yeah, I'm using if yeah. you're using a different probe then you can penetrate the skin a little bit more 
Um, so, you know, if, with my probe that we use with Venus ultrasounds, mm-hmm. we don't really look deeper than like that. After okay, that, now, it, now when he's talking about it, you're looking at about five to six inches or so, maybe a little bit more. Ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but what I'm thinking is really neat, Doc, and you've talked about this before. Um, if somebody has deeper problems than that, and we talk about that, maybe you guys can explain the difference between the deep vein system and the and the other vein system. What we're really looking at with the ultrasound is not the big ones right in the middle, right? Well, we do that. Yeah, we, yeah. We, you know, when we do a venous ultrasound, yeah. a diagnostic a study of the lower extremity, uh, we're looking at all the veins mm-hmm. uh, because uh, it's it's important to know the you know functional uh, mishaps mm-hmm. going on in the uh, deep system too. Now, luckily, most people have normal function in, mm-hmm. in their deep system. Uh, most people with like, varicose veins and the usual kind of symptoms primarily have superficial venous insufficiency, mm-hmm. but uh, but yeah, that's all part of it too. We definitely yeah. want to look at everything. Okay, because one of the things that I want to get into during the program today, Mike, is uh, is the impression that people have that you know maybe they haven't been to a a vein specialist for years, and they had maybe some spider veins done when they were young, but now they're symptomatic of of, of a bigger problem. And they come in, and you must be pleased as punch because you're one of the front guys on the front row to explain what you do because they they must say, man, where's all the uh, the butcher equipment that I used to see when I came in here. What's going on with me? Do you get that with some of our uh, people that are nicely aging in place that need to get looked at? Yeah, we get we get people with a lot of past vein history, uh, vein treatment history. We have patients who um, had procedures called um, vein stripping, mm-hmm. along, um, you know, like 20 years ago. And vein stripping was a very invasive procedure that was uh, an inpatient procedure at the hospital Mm -hmm. um and a lot of downtime very painful very difficult Mm -hmm. on the patient um and then when i explain to them what the modern vein treatments are like it's uh they're they're definitely pleasantly surprised we also have a lot of patients who keep going back to like dermatologists for um, spider vein injections Mm -hmm. and they don't understand that um you know initially that the spider veins are going to continue coming back because they're not treating the underlying uh, problem the you know when you have yeah. superficial venous insufficiency and you inject just the spider veins but you leave like the great saphenous vein or the small saphenous vein or anterior accessory saphenous veins then um, your spider veins are usually going to keep popping back up unless you treat those veins as well yeah it may not be i think doc you've explained before it's not the same vein the spider vein but if you're that part of your body was had some spider veins and you and you fixed them or shot them you're going to get some more because right. that that area is a, is attractive to spider veins or something right? yeah well the, yeah the underlying like mike was saying the underlying function of the uh, superficial yeah. system is uh, definitely having an impact on what's going on you know at the mm-hmm. level of the skin and uh, yeah it may not be the same exact spider vein that comes back yeah. but it's probably going to come back in well, some way the thing that i did get fascinated at a little bit mike was it, it's sort of neat to me the level of communication that you must have to have with the doc because consistency in examination makes the doc feel if he has to if you have to examine me and he's not there that what you do and i i noticed this guy he's kind of like he's ambidextrous because one hand he's doing the ultrasound the other hand he's writing and i think he can go back and forth <laughs> um because isn't it sort of neat that the machine does the machine actually record uh, a ultrasound or does that translate to the chart that you're doing physically next to the machine or both uh, I take images on the ultrasound machine and I take clips. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also am drawing, uh, mm-hmm. kind of mapping out the venous system as I'm doing the ultrasound. But then I'll go back after the ultrasound exam is done and then kind of fill in all the blanks with, with the images and clips that I have taken. Yeah. And isn't that, once again, consistency is the key, right? Oh, yeah. So that when you come in to do a surgery. And there, there's another question. Somebody else actually asked this. Um, do you employ the use of the ultrasound during the procedure sometimes? Yes, we do. Yeah, that's yeah, kind of neat. Extensively, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, the again, you know, you know, the ultrasound allows us to do yeah. the, what we're doing now in such a minimally invasive fashion, you know, as opposed to vein stripping and all the surgical stuff that we did before. Uh, but, yeah, using the ultrasound allows us to do yeah. that. that. That's really interesting. And I guess maybe, Mike, it sort of dovetails into why you – decided to pursue this particular thing. So I guess when you when you go to a clinic, what's it like knowing that, okay, you're going to provide the doc uh, or the surgeon with the information that they need. They're going to go and fix somebody, and then you're going to keep track of them 
what, six months later or a month later when they come in for a uh, shave and haircut to see how things are doing. Do you remember patients' legs? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you, you usually remember patients' legs. Sometimes the names and the faces get a little blurry, but yeah, you always remember that's pretty the neat, system. You know? yeah. yeah, I've seen that lake. Yeah, I think it's nice. Bob owns that lake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I'm still interested in, in the actual procedure. Um, I, and I do know that there's probably no set answer, but generally speaking, when you do a thorough ultrasound test on somebody, about how long do you spend with them? Uh, usually I'll spend... Um, if if it's a new patient, somebody who's never had any treatment before, I'll spend about 30 to 45 minutes mm-hmm. with them. Um, if it's a patient that I've seen before that I'm just checking to, you know, checking to see how they're doing after a procedure, I may only spend 20 minutes or so. Yeah, because that's what sort of, and I'm glad that we're doing this program with Mike now, Doc, because that's sort of what I'm going to do now. I'm coming in based on you taking a look at my legs a few months ago and discovering a treatment plan now i'm going back in and i guess the first thing is mike's going to take a look to see if there's been any changes from then and now is that how it works oh yeah absolutely i mean i do a full ultrasound i, I look at all the same veins that i looked at before yeah. except now I'm, I'm seeing things a little bit differently the you know we we close yeah. uh superficial veins so i'm making sure that the veins that we treated are closed mm-hmm. i'm making sure that your deep veins are nice and open that there's mm-hmm. no blood clots or any any sort of complications um, and then I'm also mm-hmm. checking to see if there are any more superficial veins that are open that we, you know, that, that could be potentially causing a problem. Um, and I check the valves in, in the open superficial veins as well. Yeah. And I think that maybe you can, you, you guys can, you know, go back and forth on your own on that end of it by talking about, you know, what level of expectation. In other words, I come in and I fill out my little, how am I doing? And that's going to determine what, what course of treatment I need this visit. And then you're going to be able to tell Mike or, uh, any other you know technician that does this or that, uh, here's the goal with this guy today. We need to take a look at this and that because he's going to have some surgery next week or whatever. Sure. Yeah, I mean, pe- people come in in the at the time of their initial office evaluation, you know, they, they present their symptoms to mm-hmm. us. So, um, you, you know, according to the symptoms that they're having, then uh, that in many ways yeah. is going to direct uh, how we evaluate them and when Mike is doing an ultrasound, yeah. he's he's aware of the complaints that the patient yeah. has had, and uh, will be aware of you know maybe looking at things a little more closely in this area or that yeah. area. Uh, but yeah, we the, it all starts with the patient telling us what's going on, um, and then from the ultrasound, we're able to you know anatomically yeah. know what's going on, and then uh, come up with a treatment plan for them. Okay, the reason I ask is because. I don't want my treatment, I mean my examination, to go somewhere in a file, okay? <laughs> because it, So I, I want to talk about what conversations that you all have uh, based on a patient. Like, for instance, I asked a question when I was there with you, Mike. Um, what's all that noise? I mean, when it goes, Wheel! I mean, is that really what's going on in me? Or is that the machine letting us both know that there's this activity or that activity? It's it's the machine's interpretation. Okay, or it, it, it's good. the way it, it, it's in, it's interpretation of the motion of the blood, actually. Okay. So it's not the actual sound that we're hearing yeah. of the blood. It's, it's just the machine uh, letting us know that there's flow and, and also how fast yeah. it's moving. I've noticed that when you, when, you, when you tell people to bear down or to hold your breath or whatever, um, when you apply the pressure and then you release it, it's like squirting. Yeah. 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 I think that's, it, you know, for a patient, I don't know what it was like before because, you know, the, the examinations I've had have, have all involved ultrasound. But I would imagine that before that, uh, the doctor had to be pretty good, Doc. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> because the, you didn't have that. So that's mm-hmm. why it was what's more invasive, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and more, you know, the testing that we'd had for venous disease uh, prior to ultrasound were, were, you know, kind of rudimentary kind of things that didn't give us anywhere near as much uh, information as the ultrasound does. Uh, and they were more time consuming and more yeah. bulky and that kind yeah. of thing. So uh, more difficult to do. Uh, so yeah, the, now with respect to you were you were getting at I think uh, where we store information mm-hmm. and what is the information that we do want and where does it go? Yeah, well, yeah. you know, there's really three places. Uh, like Mike was saying, when he's doing an ultrasound, he is uh, you know taking still images or mm-hmm. or little video clips mm-hmm. uh, of uh, of you know the the veins that he's looking at. 
Uh, and that's stored in the machine, or we can put it on a disc. Mm-hmm. So that that we keep for you know a long, long time, sure. indefinitely. Yeah. Uh, now, secondly, we also have a uh, an electronic medical record that we input mm-hmm. data from that ultrasound. And actually, the uh, the electronic medical record that we have is kind of neat because it you put in the numbers and the positions mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff, and it actually comes up with a nice little drawing. Yeah, I've seen that. It's fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's kind of cool. But then in addition to that, and the, probably the most practical thing that we have is after uh, Mike does an ultrasound, he uh, he actually draws out what he has seen on a templated kind of you know, stick figure that we use yeah. and, uh, you know, puts all the numbers and all, all the relevant uh, information so that we yeah. can, so that when we do go into the procedure with a patient, we've got one thing that we can look at and that that's going to tell us, give us all the information that we need while we're doing that procedure. Okay. So here's where I come in. I've just had my ultrasound. Now pretend that I, and I've left the room. Um, I, I'm not sure how often that you guys get to verbally communicate with each other about every patient, but typically, what would be the conversation when the doc says, okay, Mike, check out, check this guy, Mike out. He's got, we think he's got a clot down there. He's got this over here and you do your thing. And then what happens to that information? Uh, well, I mean, the, the doctor or one of the providers will talk to me and tell me what the complaints are, mm-hmm. what they think may be going on. Like, Hey, keep a special eye out for, you know, for a blood clot maybe in this mm, area. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go in there kind of with a little background and I'll talk with the patient a little bit too and kind of get my own idea about what's going on with the patient. And, um, you know, and I'll just check extra hard in, in the certain areas that I'm concerned about or that the doctor's concerned about. Um, and, yeah. The, 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 the reason I ask that is because I know that when you discuss a treatment plan with a patient – after they've had that, no matter who discusses that, whether, you know, a nurse or whatever, that all of this information travels with that person to whatever outcome you're, you're expecting. Yeah, we, we don't have a personal conversation about each and every ultrasound that's yeah, well, done hard, hard. In, in the office because, you know, 80 percent of the time. Uh, it's you know, relatively straightforward. Yeah. Uh, we have the, you know, again, when we're seeing the patient uh, after the ultrasound or, and, you know, at that point when we start to do procedures, we've got the written ultrasound mm-hmm. report. We've got the uh, diagram that Mike has done. So, uh, again, usually it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Now, are there some times when we do have to have a conversation? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, well, there, there are degrees of illness, right, and, and severity. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when somebody comes in and they're a train wreck, you, you know, every pull all stops, everybody jump in. Yeah, yeah. Or, or or like yourself, I mean, there, we have a we see a good number of people who have been who who have had treatment before they come to us, uh, or or we treated them several years ago. So uh, it's a, a little higher level of evaluation at that point because uh, we're trying to define. Uh, what the, you know the status of the procedures that had been done before, but also find out what might be new going on with that patient when they come back. Yeah, in. I think it's kind of fascinating because I'm I'm I, I, I feel confident and Mike, this is must be where you must have you, where your ability comes in, so that no matter who picks it up, they're going to be able to say, okay, this is what the this is what ultrasound says. Right. And yeah. They're not, they're not going to. In other words. You're the doc in the in in the procedure. You're the one that does the test, and the doc needs your info to make his decision on a treatment plan. Yeah. The, so I, as the vascular technologist, I you know I map out everything, and I, I try to be as detailed as I can on the worksheets, the reports that I write. Um, I, I like to be able to write, you know, reports and um, show my findings mm. in a way that is very clear. So if you know, if a doctor's going into the procedure um, and I'm not in the exact same room, he can look at my, you know, my my worksheet there and kind of mm-hmm. know exactly what's going on. And I'll put all relevant information onto the report. Um, sometimes, you know, the paper is just filled from the top yeah. to bottom with with all kinds of information. Yeah, like some mine. Pe- this guy's in trouble, doc. <laughs> Fix him up. Yeah, know? there's sometimes there's just yeah, a we, lot of information we, to put down. We, we, well, we had, see, we had a lot of discussion about your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But but here's the thing that I think is really critical, uh, and that is, and it's not necessarily a comfort level, but it is a confidence level that you have confidence in your technician to the point where you know you're making some very serious 
treatment plans or decisions based on what he has determined is going on in there that you couldn't see from outside. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I think um, maybe what we should get uh, comments from Mike on our, our, you know, what in the course of the ultrasound, what is he looking for? Mm-hmm. That really is is the information that we need. You know, uh, uh, venous insufficiency has to do yeah. with the fact that some veins in our legs are failing, yeah. and uh, typically that's from valve failure. You know, one way valves that are supposed to be keeping the blood moving in the right direction, which is up, and those valves fail, mm-hmm. uh, and the blood starts to actually move downward. Now you were talking about the sounds in the machine, I the swishing, it, and all yeah, that sort of stuff, yeah. but. Uh, Maybe Mike can kind of describe what it is that he's really looking for and what does he have to do to make that happen, just so, just to give people an idea about what they're going to go through if they come in and they have an ultrasound. Yeah, and, I, and I'm just supposing sometimes, Mike, because I've been doing this show, and by the way, we're, we are rapidly approaching our first anniversary of this show, and they say, how can you talk about veins for an hour a week every week? And it's pretty incredibly simple to do because there's so much in it. Um, but it, it must be that that is, you know, what must you get fired up on? And are there times, in addition to what Doc was saying, where you actually find something that nobody knew was there? And you, just because of your technique and your ability, you can say, okay, I think we better talk about this too because look what I found over here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. That, that, I mean, that happens all the time. Yeah. Um, you, you go in and you can kind of see if somebody has varicose veins or swelling or skin discoloration, but but – you know, you can't really look underneath the skin unless yeah, you're doing yeah, an ultrasound. Yeah. And there's all kinds of different things that you can find in the venous system. Um, so when I go into an ultrasound, I, you know, I, I'm checking the deep venous system and I'm checking the superficial venous system. So I check the valves in the deep system, uh, make sure that there's not any deep reflux and document it if there is, see how bad it is. Um, a lot of times there'll be deep reflux at certain levels uh, of the deep veins where it can be corrected with, with uh, treatment of the superficial veins. So I'm looking to see if that might be an, uh, possible um, if they do mm-hmm. have deep reflux. Uh, then as I'm checking the superficial system, that you know, there's a lot of different variations of the, of the veins. Um, so first I'm checking uh, the most common veins that are there, you know, the great saphenous vein, mm-hmm. the small saphenous vein. But then I'm also checking for any other sort of variations. I'm looking for anterior accessory saphenous veins, posterior accessory saphenous veins, um, there's a lot of stuff going there's, on there. There's a yeah, lot of, yeah, 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 I mean, there's a whole lot of different variations. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then there's variations of the variations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're looking for perforating veins. You know, that's another big thing uh, is finding veins that communicate with the deep and the superficial system and checking to see if those valves in mm-hmm. those veins are working well. Um, a lot of times you can find, you know, tons of perforators in a calf and they, they may be causing the symptoms uh, just as much as, as say, the great saphenous vein is. Um, yeah, are there some times when a patient will say to you, hey, Mike, how bad is it, man? I mean, oh. you, know, there, you know, what's what's the scope here? What, do you, what can you tell me? Well, I mean, <laughs> usually I leave that sort yeah, of information that to, the to the docs. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let them know <laughs> if I, you know, that yeah. I think that we can help them. And I also let them know what I think they can do to help themselves. Uh, compression stockings, leg elevation, um, things like yeah. that, especially with people who have deep venous insufficiency. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I definitely like to recommend you know, and, stockings for and that. Doc, when we say that, and, you know, I, I know, I think you've answered this question for me before, but I think a lot of people are going to want to know, do you use the same procedures or does Mike's work also involve the arteries? Because, I mean, obviously we're, we know about <laughs> the veins and I know what the answer is already, but what sort of difference would there be in doing an ultrasound on an artery instead of a vein because you'd have to know the difference between them i just say hey this guy's legs look great to me but i have no clue that there's arteries and there's veins yeah uh well and and we do evaluation of arterial problems Mm -hmm. in our office also uh even though it's not our main concern but uh we we do we do arterial studies mike does arterial studies all the time um and uh and yeah that sometimes people come in with a set of uh, symptoms and we're not sure is yeah, whether it's it, is it due to veins yeah. or is it due to arteries? That's great. I and, mean, it's great to hear that. And uh, so, uh, you know, most of, the t- most of the time you can tell just by yeah. listening to the patient and looking at the legs, but sometimes you're not sure. Sometimes, uh, as we talked about recently, you could have both, you know, both yeah. arterial and venous. So it's important for us to be able to do arterial studies, too. Now, um, the uh, the thing that we're the things that we're looking for in the arterial system are completely different. You know, 
uh, the uh, you know the problem with veins mm-hmm. is that uh, valves fail and blood starts to yeah. go in the wrong direction. Uh, the problem with arteries has to do with placking, you know, yeah. uh, blockages yeah, blockage in the arteries. It, right, right. And uh, so the uh, the thing that we're looking for there on the ultrasound is completely different. Uh, maybe you'd like to comment yeah, yeah. on that. My, my, what's it like? I mean, you know, I got this big old leg here. And we're going to look at my veins and my arteries. How in the heck do you tell the difference between them? I mean, oh, there's, that's there's, the magic. It's there's a lot of differences between the two. Mm. First of all, I mean the the, the direction is one, right? The direction is yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the arteries oh, are. Oh, I got that one right, Doc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the arteries have a thicker wall layer. Mm. It has an extra layer of uh, muscle tissue that the veins don't have. So you can collapse veins with the ultrasound uh, probe if you push down, but you cannot really collapse arteries too easily. Mm. Um, also, another real good way to tell um, is just by knowing the anatomy mm-hmm. and then also knowing that the you know your heart is pumping the oxygenated blood through the arteries whereas the veins um, your heart's not really moving that flow along that's all yeah. mainly respiration and, and calf movement they call your calf the uh, the venous heart yeah, actually pump. so yeah. so if you if you sample the arteries with with the ultrasound doppler you'll you know you'll see like a nice uh, rhythmic, you know, um, uh, flow like you know, like you would like if you feel your pulse on your wrist. That's mm-hmm. kind of how we see the arterial flow moving about. Whereas with the veins, it's more of like a slow, wavy kind of flow. Like and it and it varies depending on your respiration and 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 movement. And b- by the way, gang, you you need to go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com dot com and see some pretty dramatic pictures that will we'll show you. And, and also, it'll kind of walk you through some of these other things. And don't forget, a lot of our previous shows are archived, and this one will be too, uh, one of these days, when we get that up, Doc. But I, I think I have such a confidence level, not just in my court, but in, in, in your procedure. And I think that maybe uh, that's why I, thought, I think people that are out there listening, once again, explaining that in that leg of yours, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. So one would think that if you're an ultrasound operator, if you're a good one, your little probe will tell you what you're looking at all the time. Yeah, and, yeah. It, it you know, um, it, it's the anatomy is complicated. Now the the arteries, uh, the arterial system is a fair bit more constant, mm-hmm. you know, from one person yeah. to the next than veins. Uh, you know, veins can can as Mike was touching mm-hmm. on before. There's a whole bunch of different uh, you know variations mm-hmm. on a theme. Uh, arteries, not so much. So, uh, you know, we can, uh, we have an expectation for the arterial anatomy going into it. Uh, but all, yeah, all of that can be sorted out with the ultrasound. Um, the, uh, with respect to, you know, blood, arterial flow problems, mm-hmm. and again, it has to do with placking, but, you know, the main way that we... Excuse me, Doc, is, isn't placking where the inside of your artery gets choked up with this plaque. Right. And so the it can't move the same volume of blood that it used to? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and that, uh, you know, it gets to a point, once once that blockage yeah. gets to a certain percentage, uh, then patients are going to start to have symptoms from it. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's a leg or yeah. coronary arteries or whatever. But um, so the way that we look at that, um, you know, when we're, when we're diagnosing venous problems, we're looking for that reversal of flow. You know, like you sure. said, blood's going in the wrong direction. And we can actually see that, and, yeah. and that was that's part of the sloshing mm-hmm. process yeah. that we hear. Uh, and we can visualize those areas where the valves are actually failing and mm-hmm. the blood's, uh, you know, settling downward. Uh, in the arteries, since there's more of a continuous flow because of the, uh, you know, it's pulsatile, but it's a mm-hmm. continuously pulsatile flow, um, we can see those areas yeah. of uh, blockage in the artery, not only by looking at it with the ultrasound, just getting an image, but we also use, we also use flow patterns. Mm-hmm. And that's another, uh, there's a variety of different ways. Yeah, I'm ways. anxious to find out a little bit about that. I think everybody would be. Yeah, yeah. there's a variety yeah. of different things that we look at. And again, maybe Mike can touch on this. Uh, you know, what are the things that we look at when we're diagnosing arterial blockage? Uh, one of them is the picture. One of them, yeah. them is flow patterns and something that we uh, call velocity uh, yeah. and how it, how it relates to a blockage in an artery. Yeah, Mike, there's another question, obviously, and we've spent a lot of time on the program talking about how an equal opportunity uh, disease this is between men and women. However, uh, pregnant women are a little bit different than men no matter what. What's, what's the difference 
having to do and can you tell on a patient let's say that had a vascular treatments and then gets pregnant is it is it more difficult to do ultrasound is it hard because of what's going on uh, or is it uh, just different uh, I wouldn't say that it's more difficult to do a venous exam um, on a on a pregnant patient or a person who has been pregnant. Uh, pregnancy does uh, make the venous insufficiency problem a little bit worse in a lot of patients, um, but it doesn't make it any more difficult than than just a normal venous patient yeah. who has venous insufficiency. Yeah, so that's good, Doc. That you know you can still get a pretty good reading. There, there's one more thing before we go in and, and do what else you were talking about. Is I'm very curious because. I know that symptomatically I might feel something's throbbing or burning and somebody else might feel it's hot or cold. And I would imagine that sometimes people are, you know, giving you symptoms, you know, while they're lying. They say, that hurts mm-hmm. or, you know, or that, that, that's, that's throbbing or my legs feel heavy. Doesn't that sometimes help? passing along more information. Here's a symptom that we hadn't discussed that the patient just volunteered. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I definitely speak to the patients and I try to get an idea about what what type of symptoms they have. Um, and it, it definitely helps me kind of determine <laughs> what may be going on. And it just kind of supports my findings that I find uh, with the ultrasound exam. Yeah, and Doc, and that must mean that there is a... It still fascinates me, whoever came up with the whole concept of doing this with ultrasound anyway. But it also just dawned on me, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I think you mentioned one time before, I asked if the lymph system was something that you did ultrasound on. In other words, there's a lot, there's a lot of things going on. There. Yeah. And there's some bones, too. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah, muscles, yeah, tendons. Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately, the, the lymphatic system is, uh, you know, very much goes hand in hand, especially with the venous system. Uh, and we've talked about lymphedema before yeah, yeah. and the, you know, abnormalities within that lymphatic system. Unfortunately, we don't. Other than being able to visualize lymph nodes, mm-hmm. which we can, yeah. we can't really see um, flow problems within the lymphatic yeah. system with the ultrasound, and primarily just because those lymphatic channels are so tiny uh, throughout most of the extremity. Yeah, that was a question that I had, and my, I'm sure that this comes up when people say, well, look, um, if, you can't, if something's really small, how do you see it? And if something's really big, how do you see it? So obviously... Uh, time, expertise, and knowing anatomy, <laughs> so that so that you immediately know when you hit me with that probe what you're looking at. Yeah, I mean, we, most of the time when I when I'm looking in uh, at the ultrasound, I know what I'm looking at because I've come across it probably you know more than a dozen times before. No matter how you know uh, strange it may be, yeah. but um, yeah, I mean, you run into the same thing over and over again, and you get to get used to uh, what you're seeing. Do you sometimes recoil? at how bad off somebody is. I mean, not with being a specific patient, oh, yeah. but Doc, I know that sometimes you see somebody that literally limps into your office and they're in big trouble. And I'm guessing that a lot of times when you look at a person like that, it must be hard to think, how does this person even get around? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm watching them walk to my room and I'm like, oh boy, this one's going to be tough. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I can I just bet, tell. You know? yeah. Yeah, I'm but... sure I used to be like that. They used to call me a tough stick trying to even yeah. do a, a blood test on me. Yeah. Because I do know that one of the things that we talk about, and that must mean extra work for you, the ultrasound technician, when somebody is obese or when somebody is, uh, you know, experiencing a lot of pain. Yeah, it's, it's not just obesity. I mean, yeah. sometimes super thin patients can be just as difficult. It just, oh. it just <laughs> yeah. really, it just depends. Oh, I mean, so, yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. the the superficial venous system can be really, really complex, and there can be a whole lot of like things going on. Yeah. And it's just like, and you and you want to document every little piece that you see and. You want to connect it all together and, and, and also be able to explain it and understand exactly what's yeah. going on. So that um, must so. be, in some respects, Doc, and if you go to com, you can see this stuff and schedule an appointment and get and get looked at. It seems to me that almost everybody owes themselves, at least at some point in time, what's going on in my – what's going on in my – all of this stuff that's in my leg. Cause my leg's throbbing, and I want to know why. Yeah. Well, if they have symptoms, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people – People tend to ignore symptoms yeah. until they're just intolerable, yeah. uh, number one. Number two, uh, you know, a lot of the symptoms that people have referable to venous insufficiency, mm. they don't know it's due to their veins. Yeah, that's the next and point that, that I want to cover. That's one, yeah. one of the challenges that we have all the time is just being able to, you know, educate people. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, by and large, uh, when people come in, no matter what their complaints are, 
uh, whether it's spider veins yeah. and it's uh, that's associated with uh, venous insufficiency or you know uh, bad problems with swelling and mm. discoloration, etc. Uh, very often they're surprised to find out yeah. that we are talking about you know veins in their legs. Um, so, you know, the, uh, with respect to the difficulty of any one study o- over another, there, there's a number of different things yeah. that can interfere with our ability to, you know, visualize the, the things we want to see. Uh, one of them is depth. You talked yeah, about yeah, that before. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the ultrasound works by, uh, you know, uh, emitting sound waves, mm-hmm into you know the tissue that we're trying to look at and uh, those sound waves bounce off of the structures that we're looking at mm. and comes back comes to the back machine up to give you a reading. and yeah. that's what gives us yeah. our uh, our uh, picture but mm. you know there's a lot of things like for instance swelling you know just mm-hmm. a simple f- excess fluid in the leg that can get in the way of our ability to have those sound waves move in the way that, th- that we need them to show us the structures that we're looking yeah, at. Yeah, and that's why, Mike, and, and that happens with me, because one of the things that I've had is uh, chronic e- edema based on kind of really having a jammed up system for so long, I, I, although I deal with it. But there are some times when my legs are much more swollen than others, and I want, I was wondering if... If that does cause a problem to the technician trying to get a good look inside that swollen leg, yeah, sometimes the technologist does have an issue um, when there's a lot of edema. I mean, mm-hmm. the d- edema can get in the way; it can make things a little bit more fuzzy than we'd like them. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, we can still get the information mm-hmm. we need. I mean, there's other skin conditions too that make it just as difficult. Yeah. Sometimes there's a lot of just random calcifications inside of the soft tissues, and um, yeah. sometimes the thickening of the skin. Uh, makes it very difficult uh, to see inside. So it's not just edema, but yeah, the the condition of the skin and the soft tissue can affect the image quality. Sometimes we actually have to initiate some treatment now it's usually it's not the invasive yeah, yeah. kind of stuff that we do, but uh, sometimes we have to initiate treatment for a, sub, a number of weeks or even months mm-hmm. to try to uh, relieve that extremity of the swelling or the yeah. changes in the skin, et cetera, before we can get a what we would what we would consider a reliable ultrasound. But you know, I must tell you that that I'm pretty aware now of it, you know to, to make sure I get my compression and my stockings, my elevation, but. I, I'm around a lot, and especially here in Hawaii, and we've discussed this before. You see a lot more uh, here because, you know, we're wearing shorts and stuff. And there's sometimes people get past the floor and re- no return. They say, I don't care what it looks like. I'm wearing my shorts. I see some people, Mike, and it must be d- – does it sometimes amaze you as a technician how much these people are going through just to get to your office? Uh, yeah, and, you know, it really amazes me that, that these people um – sometimes walk around for years and years yeah. with this issue and and you know and it bothers them it hurts them but you know they don't really know that there's treatment options available um and you know that's that's a problem in the medical field that I've noticed is that venous insufficiency is is uh not is overlooked sometimes you um, know it may be and I think one of the things that you've talked on doc before and some of our patients that we've had in previous shows a lot of that is because, like you say, this one particular disease comes on very, very slowly. Mm-hmm. And so so the symptoms, you may not even attach to it. Sure. You might just think, hey, when you talked uh, the last couple of shows about restless leg syndrome, mm-hmm. and I, I would guess, Mike, when you are doing an ultrasound with something like that, that that's one of the things a patient will share with you, that, hey, you know, is, is is that pain that I'm doing at night or that restless leg syndrome, is that because of my veins? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll ask them questions and, and uh, sometimes I'll ask yeah. them, do you have restless leg syndrome? And they say, well, yeah, but that is that related to my veins? And they're, yeah. they're shocked to hear that, that yeah, it is. Definitely, it, it can be. Well, I remember the old song, Knee Bone Connected to the Neck Bone and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it appears to me that almost a lot of people, Doc, are in, maybe they're in denial. They don't realize how bad off they are. Or maybe even how bad the, the quality of life that they have are because their their system's not working right. Yeah, yeah, yeah and they've grown yeah. used to it. But yeah, you know, I think that uh, venous symptoms 
and venous disease in general in this country has been ignored tremendously yeah. for many, many years. Now, part of it is because of the fact that uh, some of the symptoms that we deal with, the patient can't connect with yeah. vein problems. Um, uh, some of it is, you know, back 30 years ago, when all we had was surgical yeah. vein stripping and very invasive kind of procedures, um, there was a much higher uh, threshold before people would even want to be treated. I of mean, course. they had yeah, to yeah. really feel bad yeah, before they went to, for vein stripping. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it was ignored that way. And um, and again, uh, you know, not, not everybody, and we, we try to educate uh, not only uh, you know the not only the general population, but the uh, physicians that we sure. we deal with, and uh, to make sure that uh, everybody knows the uh, you know the extent of uh, of symptoms and et cetera that come along with venous insufficiency, and it can be treated very easily these days. Yeah, and, and the other side of it is because it takes so long to collect. I think that everybody needs to find out, and this is just a plug for getting an exam um, where you sit. Uh, on the chart. I mean, you need everybody fits somewhere on the chart of venous disease. Maybe at the very bottom, you don't have any. But I think, Mike, sometimes, and, and some people are to this other end of the chart where we're going to talk about in a bit, these where we have ulcers, and that's like really bad stuff. But you said something earlier that I think needs to follow through, and that is a lot of times, well, not, it's not a large percentage, I know in Bain Clinics of Hawaii, but a lot of vascular stuff is spider veins and, and cosmetic stuff. Um, are there times that you discover during an ultrasound, if one is even done on some of those, you know, very superficial things, that you can't see what's going on inside, but there are issues? That the patient doesn't know there's nothing bulging out or sticking out, but you might be the bearer of some not very good news every now and again with an ultrasound. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, some some there's a huge spectrum with, with venous patients. Um, some patients have no visible signs whatsoever of venous insufficiency, but they'll have some of the symptoms like cramping or swelling or restless leg syndrome, and they won't connect it uh, to yeah. venous insufficiency or to, or to a vein problem because they don't have the classic varicose veins. Uh, mm -hmm. So they won't really connect the dots there. And then on the other hand, you'll have patients with with varicose veins who may not have any cramping or, or restless yeah. leg syndrome. They'll have, you know, maybe they'll just have a little bit of swelling or edema in their legs, or maybe they'll have... Uh, uh, you know, just a little bit of pain here and there. Um, so there definitely is a spectrum. Sometimes you you, you find patients with tiny little veins um, with lots of reflux. And usually the more um, uh, symptomatic patients have larger yeah, uh, veins. Out, really. But sometimes yeah, yeah. you find patients with <clears throat> tiny little veins that are only two millimeters in diameter. And, you know, there's like a few seconds of reflux, but they have all the symptoms, you know, the the pain, the swelling, the cramping, uh, the restless leg syndrome, and and so yeah, there's definitely a spectrum. There's there's not a clear cut um, uh, mold for for venous patients. Okay, so here's here's the question, Doc. Generally speaking, if somebody comes up with what they think is a vascular issue, or somebody in the family says, "Oh man, well, that's the thing we got," so obviously they come in. You you got. I, I have to tell you that they want you know the names of your unborn children on this on this question and answer thing. But the more <laughs> thorough it is, the better a picture you get. Yeah. And I know that this has been developed with malice of forethought, that there is a path that that goes through. And if a patient is honest with those questions, you can really cut through a lot of the exploratory stuff, particularly when, when then you send the patient to Mike to get an ultrasound. Yeah, yeah. The You know, the, the reason why we have that... Uh, you know, iPad questionnaire. Yeah, I, but it's very convenient. Yeah, you well, I, I think it's good. I, you know, a lot of people don't like to go through each and every question, right. but, but yeah, it really does help us narrow down, uh, you know, what's going on with this patient, and uh, in the long run, actually, it saves time because otherwise we'd be the ones, you know, asking all of those course, questions. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it helps. And, uh, you know, a, a complete history is important, not only as it pertains to their symptoms, yeah. you know, when they, they arrive, but also their past medical history, what medications they're on, allergies, all of that. Mm. You know, we, we've got to know about that because we're going to be potentially yeah. doing uh, procedures, giving them medication. And, uh, you know, it's uh, pertinent information. Uh, one of the things that we, you talked about before was swelling. And I guess, Mike, you said that Swelling. If you if you're really swollen, it's hard to get harder to get a good look 
you know, at what you're doing with the ultrasound. But obviously, some people are there because of the swelling. So you still got to be able to take enough of a look so that they can start getting some treatment, if not to do anything else, but reduce the swelling so you can do a better job. Is that a good question? Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of times uh, the patients will come in for swelling and it, it might be a little bit difficult mm-hmm. to see everything that I want to see, but usually I can uh, I can get the information that I need. And if the swelling is bad enough, we can yeah. do treatments before the ultrasound that kind of uh, minimizes the swelling enough to where I can uh, get the information that I do need. You yes. know, sometimes all we need to do is to put a, a compression wrap mm-hmm. on somebody's leg and, uh, you know, encourage elevation and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And that makes a tremendous difference. I'm sure you've seen that in the past. Absolutely. No, and even with me. So I'm, I'm thinking if you are wearing compression socks. And one thing I do know that, uh, you know, before you get surgery, you know, vascular surgery, that the insurance companies particularly want to know, well, what have we done so far? And one of them might be, do you elevate your legs? Do you work in person stockings? In other words, they're not going to automatically give me a, a get out of jail card yeah. unless I'm unless I'm participating. Right. right. Yeah. Right. We you know we're uh, we're man- mandated uh, and not only mandated but uh, you know the the best medical practice is to treat people cons- as yeah. conservatively as you can, yeah, of course, and see if that's going to be enough for them. Uh, you know, in, in, sometimes it is right. Well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I just saw a patient uh, not not too uh, or, or very recently uh, who was elderly, mm. had a lot of medical problems, uh, had bad venous ulceration. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we, we we were able to get it healed with compression mm-hmm. and then ultimately stockings and and that sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know, we just, yeah. we decided to not intervene on him just yeah. because of his age and multiple medical problems. And, uh, presume we'll be monitoring yeah. that, but presumably conservative therapy is going to work for him. Uh, but by and large, everybody, yeah. everybody needs to go through that conservative therapy period, uh, before we, uh, you know, before we recommend, uh, invasive, tr- uh, therapy. Okay. Now, before we run out of time, I want to emphasize another thing. Go to vainclinicsofhawaii.com and see what we've been talking about a little more graphically, but I wanted to save the best for last because I do know, Mike, that sometimes a patient is treated for a dermatological situation where they think that they've got this rash on their leg that's a skin rash and it's indicative of something else. Is it possible to get a good ultrasound on somebody who has real bad skin issues or ulcers? Uh, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, we we like to um, minimize the... um the amount of skin issues that the patient has before the ultrasound is is done, but um, you know that's not always uh, feasible. We're mm-hmm. you know we're not always able to close or heal the ulcers before the ultrasound. So we there are sterile techniques to do mm-hmm. the ultrasound exam to where we can you know look inside and see everything we need to see is even with an ulcer there. Um, skin issues, yeah, that that might. F- fuzz up the image a little bit but generally we can get the information that we need and then and at least enough to to treat the patient and then you know if there's any any other veins that we didn't see because the skin condition was so bad then you know yeah. we'll, we'll have an easier time seeing that once the uh treatment has begun that that's important and, and i want to make sure before we before we're done that there's no way that you're not going to be able to, to get a look eventually oh no yeah we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll always be able to to you yeah. know, get a good enough idea as to where to, um, you know, start uh, helping the patient. And, you know, Doc, we talked about that at the end of the venous issues. Um, outside of big clots are these ulcers that, you know, really need help. So it must be you need to find out what's happening around and beneath that ulcer to to, to really f- have a good treatment plan. Yeah. Uh, well, it, yeah, and in particular concerning ulcers, yeah. Uh, Mike mentioned perforator veins yeah. before. Uh, those are little uh, short uh, veins that connect the two venous systems, the deep and the superficial. Yeah. And uh, we often see reflux in a perforator in the area where an ulcer has developed or where an ulcer is not healing. Uh, and, and with respect to that, yeah, I, I mean, you know, sometimes depending on how extensive the problems are with a patient, uh, you know, we can't get, we don't do everything like right away. We, yeah. we do what we can, you know, just kind of get to a little higher level of, uh, you know, the status quo. Uh, and then, uh, you know, maybe other things, uh, become evident or maybe there were things that we weren't able to do initially and we need to, 
uh, you know, correct as we go along. So it's uh, sometimes yeah. it's more than just a one stage deal. Uh, that means that we're going to have to get you to come back, Mike. Thanks so much for being with us today. Appreciate it. And we'll see you at the office because I'm going to be there myself. Yeah, hey, I'll see you then. It was a pleasure. Yeah, Thanks yeah, for having me. Thank you, my friend. And Doc, we'll be uh, back next time. In the meantime, if you want to know more, it's so simple. Go to veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com. See you next time. Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, veinclinicsofhawaii.com. That's veinclinicsofhawaii.com.